Here we're given a function h of t that represents temperature as a function of time, but we're not given it in any sort of symbolic form. Rather, we're given the fact that it's differentiable over the interval and then some selected values at various points in time. The first thing that is going to prove useful is to situate ourselves within the fundamental theorem of calculus. And that is, we've got a function that um, fits right here, h of t, and it is differentiable so that we know that h prime of t exists from t equals 0 to 10. The function, of course, is also continuous, but that's not going to prove important here. We're also going to need to make sure we understand the definition of the mean value of a function on an interval and that we can correctly calculate the area of a trapezoid. So I've included those two items uh, as part of the useful information. Uh, with that said, let's just go ahead and get started on part A. We're asked to estimate the rate at which the temperature of the T is changing. What we need to recognize is, first of all, that that is h prime of t evaluated at 3.5. And then secondly, that we're really given no information about h prime of t, either at that time or at any time. What we do know, however, is h, and since h prime is the change in h, we can estimate the change in h at 3.5 by looking at nearby points in time the values for h. So let's try to write that up. Okay. The, um, the rate of temperature change is h prime of t evaluated at t equals 3.5. The units, because h units are degrees Celsius, the units are going to be degrees Celsius per minute. We estimate h prime of 3.5 uh, from uh, values of h over an interval. that includes 3.5. Now note that the particular point they're looking for is exactly at the dead midpoint between 2 and 5, and that's just fine. But this would be our best way of estimating h at any point during that interval, not just at the midpoint. And again, it's just an estimate. Uh, h prime of 3.5 could be quite different from this, but it's the best information that we have, so it's the best conclusion that we can draw. And so now we calculate uh, 52 minus 60 over 5 minus 2. In other words, h of 5 minus h of 2 over 5 minus 2, and that's going to give us negative 8 thirds degrees Celsius per minute. Part B. We need to immediately recognize that this expression is the mean value of the function h of t over the interval 0 to t. So let's just write that out. It expresses 
the average or mean temperature. over the interval. Uh, 0 to 10. And it's in degrees Celsius. We need to go on to actually calculate that. Uh, so we'll need the area of a trapezoid. The area of a trapezoid is the average of the two parallel sides times the distance between the two sides. And because we have a calculator available to us in this question, I'm just going to write out how I would calculate it and then show you the result. So I take the average of the first interval and I note that that's actually 66 there in the table. So 66 plus 60, the average by dividing by 2, and then the width of the interval in this case is also 2. Then I've got 60 plus 52. I need that average, and the width there uh, from 2 to 5 is 3. I'll also need uh, to average 52 and 44 over 2 and the width of that interval is 4 and I see that I didn't quite leave enough room so my last calculation is 44 plus 43 averaged and the width of that interval is just 1 and that comes out to using the calculator 52. 95 degrees Celsius. Part C asked me to evaluate H prime of T from 0 to 10. Now what's interesting here is that of course we have no information at all about H prime of T and yet if you notice carefully the wording doesn't say to approximate it but to evaluate it, suggesting an exact answer. How is that possible? Well, again, it's crucial that we understand that this is the heart of the fundamental theorem of calculus. Namely, h prime of t is situated right here. Its integral, in this case its definite integral, is simply the value of h of t at the end of the interval minus the value of h of t at the beginning of the interval and reflects how much h of t has changed over that interval. So we're going to write this equals h of 10 minus h of 0 which here is going to be 43 minus 66, which is, what is that, uh, negative 23 degrees Celsius. Again, understanding this as being the same as that is really the heart of understanding how the derivative and the integral relate to each other. Let's see, do we need to explain the meaning? Yeah, we need to explain the meaning. Um, so let's write this represents the, the change in temperature. From t equals 0 to t equals 10. This last part, d, introduces a completely new function, namely the temperature of the biscuits. But then again, what would t be without biscuits? But I digress. All right, let's, um, let's think about this. We're asked to find b of t at t equals 10. 
And again, we make use of the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says that if you'd like to know the value of a function at one point, then you start with the value at some known point. And in this case, our known point is that at t equals 0, the temperature is 100. And then you add to it the accumulated change, the signed area, the integral of the function's derivative, which we are given, over the interval in question. Now again, this is a calculator question, and so I've already put into the TI-84 calculator the formula for B prime of T. So all that's left for us to do is to go to the catalog and use the FNINT function which gives us uh, a good estimate of the integral. And put in the appropriate start time, end time, the function itself. Again, this is the derivative that we're putting in because that's what we were given. And this is a very this uh, this is with respect to x because we expressed the derivative function in terms of x. So we get that result and we'll take 100 our starting point plus our answer to see that the temperature has uh, come down to 34.1827 degrees. Let's put that in first. We'll just say, you know, B of 10 is approximately equal to 34 point, what did I say that was? I forgot those digits, 0.1827. Now, just to make sure we're answering the question that they ask, what they want to know is how much cooler are the biscuits than the tea? So let's just finish it off properly. Thus, okay, uh, 43 minus 34.1827 equals, let's do that calculation. eight point eight one seven two.